in one day, one goddamn day, I literally listened to 11 episodes, okay? For context, this bitch is 10 hours long, okay? 10 hours long, okay? And in one day, I listened to 11 episodes, because that's how fucking good this is, okay? Let me just start with this. Because I can already tell once I start talking about flaws, I'm going to lose some people. So let me just say this up front. This audiobook, it's a bit confusing because there's audio drama moments. But I guess it's just all around. It's just an audiobook. Whatever. But um, this audio experience is amazing. It is fucking amazing. Okay? It's amazing. So before I get into flaws and stuff, I really, really need you to understand that it is fucking amazing like if you are a fan of Neil Gaiman or Sandman you literally should be running to purchase this that's how good this is it is absolutely spectacular unfortunately there's some flaws which we're about to get to in just a second more if I keep in my thoughts either like a bunch of months is gonna go by <clears throat> and I'm gonna uh, forget to talk about it because a whole bunch of movies and TV shows got in the way or like I don't know, but I, I need to talk about this right now because this is just so goddamn good. It is so good! Fuck! It is so good. God damn it! First off, look at that fucking cast. Look at the fucking cast. And then and then the, the production is so good. Holy shit. Like, there's a sequence. This is when this is when this audio experience really fucking got me was at the beginning of the story uh, uh, there's this magician and he's trying to do he's trying to do the greatest magic trick that's ever been done by a magician uh, so he comes up with this idea of, of uh, creating a spell so that he can capture and kidnap like death ex itself so literally this magician is like how can I become the greatest magician oh I know I'm just gonna summon death and fucking capture it, or drain it of his power, whatever the fuck, whatever all the ideas he's trying to do with it. But yeah, he's trying to summon and capture literal death, like with the dark hood and the fucking uh, with whatever that little blade thing is. This guy is like, he's like, I, I summon the earth, I summon it, whatever the fuck he was saying, he, uh, whatever he was verbally saying to summon this goddamn. Uh, death, you know, and like there's all these people around him, they're like, she, I don't know, he, like chanting and shit, and you're just like, oh my god, I feel like I'm literally listening to a satanic ritual. That Before I pressed play on this audiobook, I literally didn't even know what the Sandman was about. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be flat out honest with you. The Sandman came out way before my time. Uh, so yeah, I went into this knowing absolutely nothing so the fact that I was blown the fuck away I can't even imagine what fans of the Sandman thought of this shit however um we gotta talk about some flaws but then I think once we got to I want to say episode six all the way to episode pretty much all the way to episode 11 this is where the flaws come in. <laughs> imagine, imagine watching Infinity War for the first time and you've never seen any of the prior 20-ish movies, okay? And now let's take a step further. I want you to imagine that when you went in to watch Infinity War, they were like, sorry, but uh, instead of watching it, you're, you're going to have to hear it. So um, we're going to have to put this blindfold on you while Infinity War is on. Yeah, that that's what this felt like. Uh, to to say that I got lost a few times is a fucking understatement. <laughs> like, like particularly particularly in chapter what was it? Particularly in chapter six, twenty four hours, there were whole moments where I was like, okay, whoa, 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 why are we just like zigzagging through this twenty four hour day? Like, and even just in general, even outside this episode, like, Neil Gaiman is skipping around time periods as if it's just something to do. Like, I, this nigga's throwing so many different time timelines and, uh, and different characters 
at me that I'm just like, whoa, I'm like, Neil, whoa, whoa, I don't know what's visually happening, whoa, what? And I, I don't know, I think they could have just done a better job at painting the world for me since I'm not seeing it. Unfortunately, the voice acting from whoever the fuck played uh, Dr. Destiny, John D, did not work for me. When I say it didn't work for me, this is how... Okay, when it comes to the voice acting, when it comes to the voice acting for John D, Dr. Destiny, this is how it sounded to me. This is how it sounded. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm in the car now, so... I'm going to need you to drag down the highway, or I'm going to have to shoot you with this gun. <laughs> Literally what the character was like to me, uh, from the voice acting alone, and God did I hate it. Yeah, Kat Dennings, listen, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I, I really don't know anything about Kat Dennings, um, I don't even really know what she's been in. Um, I'm not even entire. I'm not really even sure what her real voice sounds like. I don't know what her real voice sounds like, but unfortunately, for some reason, and, and admittedly, there's there's a bit of quirkiness, there's a bit of ditzy cuteness with the dialogue of death, sure, but having Cat, Kate, Cat, Cat, I guess having Cat Dennings voice death was a monumental mistake, okay? I did not, I did not like the voice acting for Death, and I did not like the voice acting for Dr. Destiny. Okay. Lady Bird, yeah, yeah, Lady Bird. Like, imagine uh, Saoirse Ronan's uh, voice in um, Lady Bird, and then imagine making it really high-pitched, and like, hey, big brother, how you doing? <laughs> Like, that, that's how she sounded to me. This is literally how she came across to me, like, like, hey, and she would make, like, these, ah, uh, ah, uh, God, 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 I don't, I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong with the dialogue, per se, it's just, why did you get her, of all, or why did you have her, I don't know, I just, mm, her voice did not work for me. When it comes to translating something so visual, I, I just think they could have done a better job. Uh, b b because the thing, the things that Neil Gaiman, because here's the thing, Neil Gaiman, he's just skipping around timelines like, like, like it's just something to do. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, we're, we're seeing so many different characters. We're in so many uh, environments that are clearly very visually um, complicated. That's just like, oh my god, I, I need the graphic novel, or, or at least I need to like have the audiobook and the graphic novel at the same time. Or maybe I just need to like read the graphic novels and then experience, and then go back to the audiobook experience. Because I, being a complete novice and experiencing this audiobook has, at some parts, made me wanna, it's made me wanna like pull out my hair because it's just hard to grasp what could be happening visually. Like, <laughs> Uh, there's there's moments where he was with uh, Lucifer, and I'm like, bro, I need like ten thousand times more description. Like, what's happening? I I gotta give it eight. I'm gonna give it eight out of ten. I feel good. Some of those flaws, mm, it's hard to get past. Um, they're they're pretty critical in my book, but. Yeah, I'm feeling it 8 out of 10. Again, my rating could change. It's highly possible. But uh, I'm feeling it 8 out of 10. I'm feeling between an 8 or a 9 out of 10, leaning on an 8 out of 10 at the current time. But what do you think, bitch?